lightsabers. The first initiation trial of a Force-sensitive youngling being trained by the Jedi Grand Master of the Order was to memorize the Jedi Code. If they could not do this, they could not proceed into the Jedi Service Corps and were considered merely a Force-sensitive layperson. The second initiation trial was to test one's ability to apply their knowledge and skills with the Jedi arts to use of the Force. The second trial was to construct your own lightsaber. If you can never construct your own lightsaber using the Force to align the crystal within it, you can never progress from the Jedi Service Corps to become a Padawan apprentice of a Jedi Knight. The crystal is the heart of the blade. The heart is the crystal of the Jedi. The Jedi is the crystal of the Force. The Force is the blade of the heart. All are intertwined. The crystal. The blade. The Jedi. You are one. To construct a lightsaber, one must be proficient in wiring and electronic engineering, be able to find or manufacture an appropriate size and shape focusing crystal, connect a power source to an electric arc projector, and finally, though also most importantly, align all these parts within a handle casing. This cannot be done using only technological construction methods. It requires using the force to telekinetically manipulate into position all the component parts and to finally align them all within the outer casing. This is why this weapon was originally built by the earliest Jedi Knights who left Tython as a means of using the force to create a unique and personal weapon that is easily portable, durable, long-lasting, and for Jedi as important to them as their very life itself. The earliest form of melee weapon used long before the invention of the first lightsaber was the vibroblade, which was an ordinary cutting knife or sword with an ultrasonic vibration transmitter built into the handle. The vibro weapons developed to augment the cutting or hammering properties of ordinary metals or alloys are crude implements compared to the refined technology of the legacy form of lightsaber. Following the invention of the vibroblade came the earliest forms of metallic alloy vibro swords capable of deflecting blaster shots. These were called dark sabers and were developed originally using proto-sith alchemy to alloy the blade's metal to cortosis weave alloy. These were then imbued using dark side magic to replicate in principle the later, more technologically advanced forms of flame swords used on Velmore. The flame sword used a power cell in the hilt to project a plasma charge through a pair of Velmorite crystals to focus it into a blade. Because the fire blades used on Velmore preceded the invention of the proto-sabers used during the earliest force wars on Tython prior to the formation of the Jedi Order. It is possible the proto-saber was invented as a foil to protect against the energy sword. However, the proto-saber's technology did begin as a more prototypical form of technology 
than even the flame swords developed on Velmor. In its earliest uses, the proto-saber handle was connected by a long wire to a bulky battery pack that had to be strapped to one's upper thigh. It is known, though, that by the time of the founding of the Jedi Order on Tython, some 25,783 years BBY, the legacy style of lightsaber based on the Velmorian design and housing a diatium power cell inside the handle's grip became the weapon of choice for almost all force users used ever since throughout the galaxy by both Jedi and Sith alike. The legacy lightsaber, the dual blade lightsaber, and a pair of curved handle lightsabers were the preferred models of choice for almost 26,000 light years and resulted in three different schools of lightsaber combat. The dueling sabers developed by the Yovshin swordsmen of Jar Kai on Atresia were designed to be dual wielded or with one of a pair in each hand. Thousands of years later, Jedi Master Dooku studied the art of loose Ma and would develop the curved hilt design with the intention of modifying the Jedi Jar Kai dual lightsaber fighting style. A modification on the dual saber style was made by the original Dark Lords of the Sith Empire after studying the Jaboka or Zabrak quarterstaff. By taking the pair of lightsabers used in dual wielded dueling and attaching them together using dual arc projectors and a single focusing crystal, the Sith Dark Lords created the double bladed lightsaber or saber staff. From 22,800 BBY on, the main source of focusing crystals for the Legacy Jedi lightsaber was the secret planet of Ilum, somewhere in the unknown regions, one hyperjump away from the Metello system in the Coruscant sector. Ilum was an ice-covered planet pummeled by snow from a constant and relentless winter on the surface, but with a rich catacomb network of caves beneath the surface, converted by the Jedi sense into an immense temple. Most of the crystals that grow in these caves are blue or green, and that is why, following the Seven Battles of the Rusan campaign around 1000 BBY, most legacy Jedi lightsabers emit a blue or green arc light. From 64 known lightsaber crystal types, there are emitted a catalog of no fewer than 48 unique different lightsaber hues and colors. The Jedi used mainly blue and green natural crystals for their lightsaber construction, but the Sith used red crystals often synthetic and imbued with dark side energy through use of Sith alchemy. When Anakin Skywalker turned to the dark side and became Darth Vader, he replaced the blue crystal in his dual phase lightsaber hilt with a red Quixani crystal formed when a crystal-rich planet was consumed by a supernova.